Interesting conversation tonight. What do you think, Jennifer? Yeah. Huh? Justin's on the line from Illinois with us. Coming to you live from Studio City, Los Angeles, California. There are millions of people that are questioning if the world is flat. Now, I, I got to be honest with you. I was doing bongs in those days in high school. <laughs> to be honest with you, man. Yeah, but but I went to science class, and I was taught that you know that the world was round, and um, you know, and that there was gravity, and that there was all these kinds of things. Then again, though, I was also uh, taught to learn that the uh, borders were safe, and that there was like guards that stood next to the borders and made sure that none of the bad guys came in. I was wrong about that, that's for sure. And I was also taught that the president of the United States, JFK, was not assassinated by our own elite. And, you know, that was a lie also. So, you know, hey, you got to question everything. That's for sure. That's the thing. That's the key. Knowledge is the key to everything. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to share some knowledge about this thing because this is a big deal to some people. To me, I got to be honest with you. I felt crazy even looking it up. Um, because again, one plus one is two, and two plus two now is five, supposedly. <laughs> that is depends on what school you're going to, I, from what I hear. Anyway, Jennifer Mills is with us, and Justin from Illinois. Justin, how you, you're back with us? How you doing, buddy? All right, all right. Good conversation. Okay, Jennifer, where were you guys at? Um, here, I found uh, in my notes here um, that uh, they're saying that gravity does not exist. Instead, the Earth is constantly accelerating upwards so that the force of gravity is, is like being pushed in your seat in a car, okay? Um, and that it is accelerating upwards due to what they call dark energy. But they don't explain that. Um, and I don't know if they can yeah, explain What is dark that. energy? What is that? Dark mass or dark energy? No, just dark just energy. Just dark energy. What the hell is that? Justin, you know? Um... They need that. I didn't know. We lost you. You there? <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, there you go. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Can you hear me? Uh huh. Yeah, go ahead. Um, they need that for the ever expanding universe theory. That's all I know. Um, the universe in their model is constantly expanding, and so they're trying to find some force and reason for that happening. But I got an interesting concept for you guys to think about. Okay. The constellations. Okay. If you want to look at the sky or something like that, it's a pretty good indication of the ground that we stand on. Now, the constellations, as far as we know, have been the same, you know, for recorded history as far as I'm aware of. Now, you've even heard the pyramids are built after Orion's Belt. I'm not sure that that's factual, but... I know whoever the how, hell... How could that be possible? If we're flying through space at 67,000 miles per hour, they should change like like the moon phases, don't you know? By the way, there is a lunar eclipse tonight. <laughs> is there? Oh, I totally missed out it, on that. I was so busy reading all this stuff. Um, I'm going to go watch it. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not good. It's a few hours away. Ah, yeah. oh, dark, aren't it? I'm, <laughs> so, I'm sure it's on YouTube. Damn it. <laughs> and with all the stuff in the sky, you probably can't see it anyhow. Yeah, yeah. With all the, uh, I don't know about about you, but we're in California right now, and uh, just today we were standing out uh, in front of the studio, and I said, you know, look up at the sky up there; it's just full of chemtrails. Jeez. Oh man, it's ridiculous. And the beautiful blue sky went to white, and uh, it was unreal. And uh, we were literally working really late last night in the studio. When we left the studio, it was like um, eleven o'clock at night, and uh, which wasn't really late. But when we walked out the door, it seemed like it was. Like the sun was coming up. Yeah. It, it was yeah. really weird because all the white yeah. was just, it's you like know. the sky's illuminated or something. Right, exactly. And, and I think I think the uh, particles in the air are actually reflecting light from the earth. I think that's what's happening in my mind because I have noticed the same thing. It's almost like a bright, I mean, the sky is just weird. Uh-huh, yeah. Everything about the sky is changing. It, 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 oh, Totally. And, you know, and I, I got in an argument with some guy in Utah at the weather station one day when I was touring through town there, and I, I was telling him, hey, look up in the sky. What do you, what the hell are those things? And he's saying, you're, you're crazy, you're insane, you're insane. Guys, there's videos on YouTube right now that show the airplanes that are dropping this stuff, and it shows the tanks in the back. Have you seen those, Justin? Yeah, I have. With the tanks but, in the back of the planes yeah, and stuff? 
Yeah. And here again, I try to remain completely unbiased about anything. And so if I can't use, if I'm going to discredit other people's photos and videos, then I can't really use my own as proofs. But this, the chemtrail is easy for me because you just go out and look, you know. I mean, uh -huh. <laughs> right. if you don't know what a real cloud looks like and, and you know, mm -hmm. rainbows in the sky and sunsets and sunrises that we're seeing with all this coloration, there's right. people that want to say it's Nibiru or Planet X or something like oh, that. Don't, don't bring up Nibiru. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another, I mean, I, another yeah, argument. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying that's one of the excuses for the uh, altercation in our sky. And who, who am I to say it isn't? But I know the sky is changing, that's for sure. Yeah, no kidding. Well, the sky is always changing. Everything is always moving. But everything is so far apart that it is imperceptible pretty much in our lifetime um, they say that, you know, 50,000 years from now, um, our offspring will be looking at a totally different sky. Uh, how long ago was, uh, um, were the pyramids built? They were, you know, it wasn't really that long ago. So the constellations haven't changed that much. They probably have changed some, but we have different methods of uh, mapping them now than we did then. Um, so it's hard to really compare uh, what that change has been. Right, right. I'm looking at um, it. We're showing an interesting video. I don't know, Justin, if you're kind of like watching the show at the same time with your audio down. Um, but uh, we. I hope I am now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we. You know, I've got some images going and stuff like that. Some interesting stuff. If you see anything that you want to touch on. Um, you know, okay. let us know for sure because you know we're just trying to. We're, you know, th this show is about showing both sides of everything. Um, you know, whether we believe in it, whether we like it, whether we approve on it, whether we disagree with it, whether we think you're insane or you think we're insane, it doesn't matter. We just like to show both sides of it. That's what we do, um, and uh, try to be as biased as possible. But I'll tell you what, man, I'm, I'm serious. You know, this is just like telling me that a duck um, really goes. Uh, cluck cluck and the uh, chicken goes quack quack uh, and I'm going wait a minute <laughs> no I know what a duck looks like and I know what a chicken looks like I know the difference between unless you've been lying to me all my life yes so Justin I have a question go, go ahead yeah I have a question I, you know and it goes back to what we were talking about day and night um, on a flat earth how do you get a day and a night on flat earth what I mean? What, well, that, what is your belief? That was one of my last hurdles that I had to overcome to even be able to consider the Earth not being a globe. Um, and it's all about perspective, according to the flat Earth model. Um, like I said, and I'll, I'll keep saying I don't subscribe to either one um, because I believe it's not provable. But I can understand the theories of the flat Earth, which is. As things move away from your eye, if they're high in the sky, it appears like they're going to the ground. The ground rises up and the sky goes down. It's all converges at your eye level. It's called perspective. And uh, no matter how high you go in a plane or an air balloon or whatever, the horizon always remains fixed at eye level. Um, so the ground rises up and the sky falls down and converges. And it's like looking down the hall in the hotel room. You've seen those pictures where the walls get smaller, ceiling drops to the floor, and everything converges at mm -hmm. eye level. Right. And it's the same outside. Um, like if you look at any picture, I mean, here we go with pictures again, right? <laughs> I've never flown, but... <laughs> If you look, if you fly, look out the window, and you will see that the horizon rises up to meet your eye level from the plane. You've never flown Wonder. before, Justin. But my sister just got back from Georgia, and she took a million pictures because she's involved in all this too. And it's just it's amazing when you open your eyes and are able to see with a different understanding that hey, wait a minute. Why is the horizon at eye level when it should be falling off dramatically? Um, within 100 miles, you're talking 6,000 feet. It's actually 66.66666, go figure. But um, that's, a quite a, that's over a mile of fall. So theoretically, there's no way that the horizon should be at eye level.
level at any altitude. Grant, Jen, what do you have to say? Well, I mean, I was going to say that it probably has to do with something about how you're oriented to uh, on on the Earth. Um, you're always standing upright, and so and and the Earth being so large, you're not going to see. It, it would have to be a lot smaller for the horizon to be lower. Actually, is kind of what I'm saying. Um, because it's so big, you're even in a plane. You're really not that far up above. You're not high enough up above the Earth uh, to see that horizon level change. You have to be uh, up farther up out of the atmosphere, really, in order to see that that uh, the horizon uh, lower and to start seeing the curvature of the Earth. In fact, I mean, they were able okay. to see the curvature of the Earth okay, from the Concorde. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you could see the curvature of the Earth from the Concorde flights, but since those flights don't, you know, exist anymore, um, you can't really get a picture of the curvature of the Earth um, or that perspective of the horizon changing from just a regular commercial air flight. Right. Okay, well, and the flat Earth argument to that is, but one of the proofs of the globe is watching a boat sail over the horizon. Right. Okay. And so, and so, if we, if the Earth's that big, and we really need that kind of distance away from it to verify that, then we shouldn't see a boat sailing over the horizon. That's interesting, right? That's what I was talking about earlier. That somebody pointed out that you got further and further, you could still see it, kind of thing. Yeah, but I haven't seen any actual photographic proof of that. I, I, I saw uh, that mentioned that um, that something didn't really sink down below the horizon, um, that it just moved out of your eyesight, out of your um, ability to... Perspective. Uh-huh. Um, but then how do you explain sunsets? Beautiful. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was getting at <laughs> with the perspective. Because... Was, like the, I said, was the last thing hurdle that I had to overcome in order to even consider this theory. Um, but it's all, you know, if you, uh, it's about perspective. I, I just, that's all I can say. You got to look into it. If I, if I try to explain it on the air, I'll feel like a moron and you guys will probably make fun of me because, <laughs> like I said, this is the last hurdle that uh, the hive mind comes across before it can even you know, consider this being impossible. Okay, Justin, uh, we're going to have to take a we're, we're going to have to take a break right here and uh, we'll be right back after this. Right. 